Brought to you by Reuters Plus Content Studios. Sponsored by Mazda. Hello and welcome to Future Energy Talks with me, Andrew Wilson. This is our final episode in the series and a chance to get a unique insight from the top from Mazda, one of the world's leading renewable energy companies. We're talking with CEO Mohammed Jamil Al Ramahi, who has led Mazda since 2016 in what promises to be a timely, holistic deep dive into an undisputed energy pioneer as the world's attention focuses on COP28. As the UAE's clean energy pioneer, Mazda is front and center as the critical climate talks get underway. The company has attracted admiration globally for the success of its remit that is tightly focused on promoting innovation in solar, wind, energy storage, waste to energy, and geothermal power. So having placed the UAE at the forefront of progress, what's next for Mazda? Well, Mr. Al Ramahi, thank you so much indeed for joining us at a particularly busy time, but nonetheless, good to see you. Good to see you, Andrew, and thank you for having me uh, on your show. Good to talk to you as well. Let's start straight away with a question about your company. Mazda is a global leader in renewable energy. Can you tell us a little bit more about the journey the company has been through? Well, you know, Andrew, I think since our establishment in 2006, um, the company has uh, grown, uh, you know, tremendously. Um, we have a portfolio today of around 20 gigawatt. Uh, we were active in 40 countries. Our combined portfolio value today is around 30 billion US dollars. Um, and since last year, uh, we welcomed two new shareholders along uh, side our founding shareholder, Mubadala. We welcomed Taqa as a shareholder and we, of course, welcomed Adnok, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, as, a, as a shareholders. And since then, our strategy has a little bit shifted towards further growth. Um, so ultimately, we have today a new target uh, that we are pursuing which is 100 gigawatt by 2030 of renewable energy capacity and 1 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030 in terms of production capacity. So as you can imagine, we have been extremely busy over the past two decades and I can assure you that we will be even busier in the next two decades. Now, the focus has been thus far on renewables in one form or other, but how else is the UAE driving forward the agenda for energy transition? So since our inception or since Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates established Mazdar or what we call Abu Dhabi Future Energy Company in 2006, the key objective of Abu Dhabi was to diversify away from, you know, fossil fuel energy generation. So what we used to call the Abu Dhabi uh, energy strategy at that time uh, is to basically uh, reduce our dependent on natural gas, which at that time uh, used to be the only source of energy for our power generation. And as you can imagine, uh, within our region, uh, our water, uh, supply is fully dependent on the power generation. So whatever power we generate, almost 40% of that goes towards desalination of water. And that was always dependent at that time on natural gas. We started with a 10 megawatt uh, solar farm uh, that was inaugurated in 2008. At that time, this farm was the largest solar farm in our region, in fact, in the Arab world. I just came from our western region, very close to Abu Dhabi, an hour, almost an hour, 45 minutes away from where I am today in Mazda City, uh, to inaugurate the single largest solar farm in the world in one location, Al-Dhafra Solar Farm, two gigawatt. So today, as you can imagine, 
from where we started and where we have what what we have built thus far in Abu Dhabi and general speaking in the United Arab Emirates is tremendous. You know, we started from almost nothing, in fact nothing in terms of renewable energy penetration. What we have today is almost per capita the largest installation of solar or renewable energy power uh, in the world. Uh, I think uh, the UAE today is the second per capita in terms of renewable energy penetration in the world. So the United Arab Emirates has been committed through Mazdar and through other venues such as Mohammed bin Rashid Solar Park in Dubai, which was a clear demonstration and commitment from the Emirate of Dubai uh, to establish a renewable energy target. Uh, and of course, the United Arab Emirates uh, at a federal level, uh, as we have been committed from day one to the Paris Agreement, we have been also committed uh, to a net zero target by 2050. Uh, the United Arab Emirates has been at the forefront of, of this uh, dialogue uh, and this commitment. And of course, Mazdar plays a very important role to ensure that these targets are implemented. But Mazdar is not playing that role only within our country or within our uh, neighborhood. We are also playing this role actively across the world. We supported a lot of uh, countries regionally and globally to achieve their renewable energy targets, uh, and we will continue in doing so in the future. Well, it's interesting you talk about those partnerships. Let's talk particularly about the Global South. Those sort of countries are front and centre of any international conference, like the Climate Talk Conference, the ones this year is descending onto your location. Give me an idea of the kind of cooperation Mazda has with organisations and governments in the Global South. Well, you know, Andrew, as you can imagine, we, as a country, we are a member of the Global South. In fact, we are part of the Global South. Um, and, uh, and as we are committed, uh, Mazdar, as, as Mazdar is committed to the Global North, we are also committed to the Global South. You know, starting from our early days, working within our neighborhood, supporting uh, countries uh, in the Levant, like the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, building the first and the largest wind farm there more than 10 years ago, uh, to Egypt, uh, in North Africa, to Mauritania. Uh, but moreover, you know, today, you know, today, Mazdar with its partners, with its partners, is the largest owner operator of renewable energy in the African continent. We have 1.3 gigawatt of operational asset within Africa. We have a pipeline of more than 10 gigawatt in Africa. I would say we are the largest in Central Asia. We have played a, a, a strategic and a very important role to really push forward renewable energy within Central Asia. We built the first solar farm in Uzbekistan, in Central Asia. And it was the first, in fact, it was the largest solar farm in Central Asia. And it was inaugurated by His Excellency, the president of the country last year. Today, our portfolio in Central Asia spans north of 10 gigawatt. Okay, only in Uzbekistan, today we are building around 1.5 gigawatts. Uh, so, as you can imagine, you know, Mazdar and the UAE is fully committed to the Global South. Not because we are a member of the Global South, because we believe that there has to be a lot, a lot of work to be done within the Global South. We can't do that, we can't do that without, you know, working closely with these governments. We can't do that without working closely with our partners. Some of these partners are from the Global South uh, and they have been really 
strategic partners for Mazdar from day one. I'll give you a few examples. You know, uh, EDF from France is a strategic partner who has been working with us uh, in several of these countries. Total Energy out of France as well, uh, and so on and so forth. But more importantly, we will not be able to really accelerate renewable energy within the global south without the support of the financial institutions. And this is where the World Bank and the Development Bank, such as the IFC and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Asian Development Bank and the African Development Bank, needs to play their role. They have been, in fact, very supportive over the past decades. They have given us a lot of money to finance these projects. However, we need to really look into how we can tap into further concessional financing to really push forward the acceleration of renewables in the Global South. It's interesting, while you were speaking just then, I thought about how important partnerships are in these global challenges that we face, and also the location of where you are. Do you feel that Mazdar is well-placed to be a bridge builder, uh, to be a bridge between the North and the South and the more remote economies with the more established ones? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, our country here in the United Arab Emirates, we have always acted as a bridge. We are a young country, you know. Um, but since inception, you know, our leadership has always embraced co collaboration. Our leadership and our country has always embraced connectivity. So if you look at, you know, you know the, the, our airports, our ports, uh, you know, they, it's a hub. It's a hub between nations, between countries, between the global north and the global south. And you are right. Mazdar is playing its role to act as a bridge between the global north and the global south. We have, and I think we will continue in doing so. So COP28 descends into your location. The finest negotiators, the environmental scientists, captains of industry, heads of government, all meeting again, as they do every 12 months, to try and battle out a way forward with so many things, an agenda that just grows by the day. What are you hoping to see come out of COP28? Honestly, Andrew, you know, we, we, we are very excited. Let's, let's start with that. We are very excited. We are very happy. We are honored to, you know, really receiving all, all these guests into our country, welcoming all of these delegations, being public, uh, private, NGOs, uh, you know, youth uh, to, to Dubai and to Expo City where, where COP28 will be hosted. Uh, we as a company, uh, Mazdar, obviously is a strategic partner for COP28. Uh, we will be extremely active through the green zone and the blue zone. ADSW uh, will happen, you know, the summit will happen in the first week of COP28. The Zayed Sustainability Prize will also be, the award ceremony will be within COP28 uh, agenda. So we are very excited about it. Um, you know, the, this topic is, is, is strategic topic. It's a global topic. It's a serious topic. Uh, my country has been, uh, you know, from the beginning committed to climate change, committed to the climate challenge. Uh, and in fact, you know, our founding CEO, Dr. Sultan Al-Jaber, uh, and our current chairman at Mazdar, he uh, will assume COP28 presidency during the event, and he will remain COP28 president for obviously the next uh, term of the presidency. Uh, there is so many topics to discuss. What I am hopeful for is consensus around few things, mainly, uh, which is very important uh, for the world and it's very important for us, uh, is A, tripling renewables. I think this is a very important matter uh, and I believe that we have the right momentum, the right support, uh, at least from our peers 
in terms of companies and institutions globally, but I also believe that we have the support by the global North and South. Uh, second is also very close to my heart, and it's something that I've hinted to, is financing. You know, financing is key. Providing concessional financing, providing financing structures and instrument to accelerate the renewable energy or the energy transition is very important. So if you think about tripling renewables, and we commit towards that, what we need next to tripling renewables is the fuel to ensure that, that we actually implement that. Um, I'm also hopeful that something will happen around, you know, committing towards financing uh, the energy transition of the future. Briefly, Mr. Mahi, it's been a busy year. COP will be the end of a very busy year for Mazda. Um, how has 2023 been for your organization? Are there any other highlights that you think of for this year? Well, absolutely, it has been busy. I, I can assure you that. You know, it's been really busy. It's been, you know, a very successful year for us. Uh, it's been an exhausting year uh, for all of us here at Mazdar. Uh, but, you know, nothing comes easy. We've been in the business of renewables for two decades. We've started from nothing. We've went uh, around the world pushing for renewable energy, developing renewable energy from scratch, working with governments, working with off-takers, working with the private sector and financial institutions. Uh, hard work and commitment is key for us. And this will continue. Our achievements will never stop, you know, with the support of our shareholders, with the support of our partners. Uh, there will be, hopefully, a few announcements uh, coming before the year end, Andrew. Well, we'll look forward to those. A final thought then, Mr. Amahi, is uh, are you an optimist? I mean, there are many fine minds working on these issues that we face today to do with climate change and all the other threats to the, the planet's natural future. Are you optimistic that we can harness the financial cooperation, the partnerships, the technology to keep this whole show on the road, to keep it going? I am 100% optimist. I've been always been optimist. You know, there are a lot of challenges. There is headwind. There is a lot of risks uh, that is affiliated to our business. There's a lot of challenges affiliated to what we are trying to do. Uh, but this is the nature of business. You know, this is the nature of business. Um, but I am extremely optimist. And I believe that we will be able to achieve uh, our targets as a company. But I am also optimistic that the world will come together to achieve its objective and uh, uh, towards, towards our environment and towards this whole lovely, beautiful planet that we live in. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Mohammed Jamil Ramahi, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure. Indeed. Thanks very much. Well, Mr. Al Ramahi there with plenty to say and plenty of reasons for optimism amid the challenges that do lie ahead. And a good way to end our journey into the world's energy transition. Do feel free to listen back to any of the podcasts in our series, all made available for free, courtesy of Mazda. Thanks for joining me, Andrew Wilson, for Future Energy Talks. I hope you found our discussions as fascinating as I have. Goodbye for now. Brought to you by Reuters Plus Content Studios. Sponsored by Mazda.